I'm Trevor Nielsen, president of the Global Philanthropy Group. We've worked with some of the world's leading philanthropists to develop innovative solutions to address global problems. They understand that truly impactful philanthropy often requires more than just generous donations of money. For most people, philanthropy means writing a check, and that's great. But for some people, philanthropy means a lot more. Working to create change through grant making, partnerships, and advocacy is a deeply personal part of their lives. That's where we come in, helping philanthropists to create the change that they want to see in the world. Giving is brought to you by ExxonMobil. Welcome back. I'm Lisa Shields and this is Giving. It's unacceptable that pregnancy is the leading cause of death for women and girls in the developing world. With basic medical care, 80% of these deaths could be avoided. International supermodel Leah Kabidi is taking on maternal mortality. Let's see how. We have the power to save the lives of mothers and children and we should. So if you're a donor nation, please maintain development aid and prioritize some of your health funding for mothers. If you're a developing nation, prioritize this within your own health, health projects and fund maternal and child health. We just have to do something. We just cannot ignore this anymore. needs access to basic medical care. That's really what it is. She needs somebody who's skilled, who's a skilled attendant there next to her while she's delivering. It's basically prenatal, postnatal, and, and during pregnancy care. Uh, clean environment, um, so some sort of a clinic, and uh, equipment there for her, and uh, that's, that's what she needs. <laughs> and if you can make sure that every woman delivers that way, uh, 80% of these deaths are preventable. We're talking about every minute one woman dying from childbirth. It's crazy. A, a woman will likely die from pregnancy and childbirth complications than any other problem in, a, in the third world country. And that, I think, is a concept that people don't really know. Uh, people think that you know, women are dying from other problems. They're, she's not. Most women die from childbirth. And I think uh, it's, it's shameful. It's really shameful and it's something that you know, it's been kept in the back burner for too long, and it's time to really, you know, to do something about it. About maybe three, four years ago, the World Health Organization approached me. This was interesting because I, you know, I, I grew up in Ethiopia, and, and growing up in Ethiopia, you sort of grew up surrounded by a lot of poverty, you know, and you see it firsthand, and it's something that sort of stays with you, and it's something that uh, I've always really wanted to do something about. I never really knew which aspect I wanted to focus on. Um, and in a way, I feel like maternal health came to me. Um, and me being a mother, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a mom, I have two children, and I had my kids here in the, in the US, which sort of shows the difference between you know, having children in a place like Ethiopia and having your children here. Uh, the difference can be life and death. You know, growing up in Ethiopia, I. I I was aware, and it was very common to hear of women dying in childbirth. It was very, very normal. Um, and it was almost, for me, sort of a culture shock in a way to come to the U.S. to find out that women did not die from childbirth. That was the first realization for me. The, the sad part about maternal, maternal health and maternal mortality is that really you can go back 20, 30, 40 years and nothing has really changed. Most of the time, if you take a country like Ethiopia, maybe 80% of the women are delivering unassisted in a by themselves in a house, in a hut, maybe there's not even clean water, so they're very prone to infection and infection will kill them. Uh, and if they're not dead, maybe their child is going to die because uh, there's no, they have no one there, there's no skilled attendant, there's no nurse, there's no doctor. Um, so every, sim every little thing will, can take their life away. So she knew labor, she you have to go to the health center, does she know that? She don't know. She didn't know. She didn't know that, and she has even has no any antenatal, even no single antenatal visit to the health center. So she didn't know that you're yeah. supposed to go yeah, to the health it's center. It's usually the self health center. They told to come when level starts. You know the challenge that we have is. 
trying to really focus people's attention on maternal health and funding on maternal health because it's sort of a, a, an issue that gets um, uh, not, it doesn't get addressed. It doesn't get addressed. Everything else gets addressed. Maternal health does not get addressed. And kids will be growing without a mother. And when children grow without a mother, their risk of dying gets, it is increased. Um, their chances of not going to school is increased. Um, everything else gets worsened. So you're sort of not only affecting her, her death, but then also the children's lives, the family's life, the community's life. And then, um, from the community becomes the, you know, the, the country, the world. I mean, we're all, it's all connected now. We can't really, there's no more them and us. It's really, it's all connected and everything affects everybody else. And so I think focusing on a, on, on a mother's life is really the key to solving most problems. The goal is to, is to make sure that a woman anywhere in the world who's pregnant does not have to think about the tragedy that could be her death while giving birth. I think that's the goal. Um, we've done it here. I mean, America too had this problem before. Women used to die in childbirth here. Now they don't. We've solved the problem. So I, the goal is to make sure that the way we solved it here, to solve it there. And um, and it's, it's, it, it's some of the you know countries that have done it, they did it in a lifetime. They did it in 30 years, 40 years. It's not a lot. It's not a lot to save. Uh, <laughs> almost half a million women every year. Not to mention, you're giving back all these motherless children their mother. And I think that's priceless. You know, that's just priceless. It was quite an honor for me to be really at the UN speaking on maternal health because, um, it, you know, again, it gives us hope and it gives me hope that also the, the, the UN and the Secretary General himself is really talking about maternal health as an issue now. Um, so is Dr. Margaret Chan from the, you know, the World, WH World Health Organization. I think we really need commitment from world leaders and, and also local governments. Local governments in the countries as well have to uh, step up and, and start allocating more funding specifically to maternal health. Um, I think it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a two-way solution where international donor communities have to commit and also the local governments have to commit as well. And uh, if we did that, I think we, we, we can solve it. The whole idea of giving birth or, or being pregnant is such a joyful experience and it's such a wonderful gift that you um, are given. You know, if you had to be in a situation where every time you're pregnant, you have to think about whether you will survive or not. That's awful. I think that's such an awful place to be. And we have to do everything we can to sort of not have that to be a situation for any woman to go through. Like Leah and Elliot in the previous piece, more and more people are finding it their responsibility to leverage their fame to help less advantaged people around the world. The pioneer of this kind of cause celeb is the one and only Paul Newman. We pay tribute to him after the break. Giving is brought to you by ExxonMobil. There aren't nearly enough kids interested in math and science. There are great opportunities out there and some huge problems we need to solve. That's why ExxonMobil supports programs that help teach teachers and get thousands of kids excited about math and science early on. I'm actually a science ambassador with a local school. I've just had a chance to see so many kids who have it in them to be the next great scientists to help us solve some of these really difficult problems we face. 